Well, welcome to On Point Live, right here from the Manhattan Beach studios. Hi, everybody. I'm Vince Ferragamo, former Super Bowl quarterback. Well, to On and Point Live. well, we're getting a, <laughs> we're getting some feedback over here. Yes, we are. I think I. Well, Jack, you've got it on there. <laughs> I'm listening to it live. Well, we're live, and we're coming to you live tonight because we're going to preview the Seattle Seahawks and the New York Giants, their Monday night football game soon. But before I do that, let me bring in my, my partner, Hall of Famer and 20-year NFL legend, Jackie Slater. And Jackie, wow, what a big weekend. We have to recap what happened this weekend. And I'm telling you, our local teams did really well, the Rams and both the Chargers. They, they were, both won. They were both impressive, Vince. And, yeah. and they did the things that they had to do against their opponents in order to win the ball game. They, it, it was uniquely designed game plans on both sides of the ball by the coaching staffs. You know, Jackie, the Rams had to travel to Cincinnati earlier the, the previous week. Then they had to come home. Then they went all the way back to the Midwest, to Indianapolis, had a, had a short week, preview game. Jackie, they didn't come out flat. They were energetic. They were excited to play high tempo. It didn't seem like there was any jet lag at all for the Rams. No, at all. Not at all. And, you know, Vince, this, that, that's a product of having this team be young, aggressive leaders, right off the college campuses. They, they don't know any different now. But if you ask Aaron Donald or if you ask some of the other veterans, could they feel the difference going three hours and being three hours behind on the East Coast? They tell you, yeah, I, obviously we can feel that. But these young guys, they, they just came out and played. And also Aaron Donald. You, if you watched Aaron Donald's game against Quentin Nelson, you would never know that he had jet lag or anything like that. And they had, they had to go overtime to win, too, Jackie. 29 Absolutely. To 23, they beat the Colts. But you know what surprised me, though? The Rams had a great defensive game plan to contain Anthony Richardson, the young star quarterback who was very athletic, Jack. He can move around. What were they doing to stop well, him? He couldn't you, He couldn't get anywhere. You, you're absolutely right. Raheem Mars, the defensive coordinator, looked at this guy and said, hey, we can't let this guy just take off. And we're probably going to anticipate him taking off because we're going to do enough stuff with the coverages where he feels like he has to do that. And he did on several occasions. But one of the unique things that happened, I noticed, uh, was that they, when they ran their stunts, they would penetrate with the down lineman and they would loop a linebacker like Ernest Jones right over the middle. And though he was penetrating, he was spying. Spice. He had his eye right on the quarterback. If he had taken off, he would run right into his arm. So I think Raheem Morris did that team a huge, huge favor with the designs that he had to contain this athletic quarterback. Jackie, two of the best in the business, Aaron Donald and Quentin Nelson. They oh. were going after it, Jackie. Man. Head to head, Jackie. You saw the one play, Aaron Donald prevailed. It, it was unbelievable. Awesome. You, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there watching this game. Now, you got to understand that this offensive guard, did you just call his name, Quentin Nelson, was the first offensive guard to be awarded a $22 million per year contract. Don't you he, wish you could have got that kind of Of course I wish I could have got that kind of contract. I mean, he is just that good. Yeah. And the other interesting thing about that to me is that usually people will turn the, the offensive line to Aaron Donald. In other words, the guard would block him, and then the center would come over and help, and the backside guard would be by himself. They turned the protection away at times, and they left Quentin Nelson one-on-one -on -one with Aaron Donald as if he could handle him. Yeah. And I'm telling you, Aaron Donald got healthy. He got a lot of pressure on the quarterback. That first sack he had, he just knocked him back with nine yards, dropped him right in the heart of the pocket. And if you <laughs> if you know right anything about this, if you know anything about the game of pro football, and you look at Aaron Donald, if you watch that game, you have to say to yourself, this is the best defensive tackle that I've ever seen play. You know what, Jackie, not people, not too many people are going to disagree with you on that. I'm telling you. But uh, as good as the defense was, Jackie, and they've, they've held teams 20 points or less in most of the games, they played great on offense with this young team. They, were, they had 40 passes, Jackie, for over 300 yards, and they had 36 rushes for 164 yards, balance. Jackie. Balance. Great balance. Attack. That's what we've been calling for, balance. They're getting it, and they're getting it up front. And, but you know what, Jackie? I was so impressed with – Puka Nakoa, he has been so impressive, Jackie. He why, just, Vince, why, why is he having such so much success? You know what, Jackie? He's intelligent. He's a smart receiver. He knows when to break. He's been given great information from uh, from the coaching staff, and he knows how to direct his his routes. He knows when to slow down, when to speed up, and he's got options 
to run. And Matt Stafford is using him like he's been a, a seasoned veteran. Like he's been there the whole time. Been the whole time. So it's going to be real interesting to see Cooper Cup when he comes back in the lineup with him and Puka both in the lineup. They're going to have some kind of passing attack. You wouldn't believe. They certainly are. But, Jackie, they're also doing it up front. But a couple weeks ago in the loss, they, had, they struggled on the offensive line. I think one of the players, Zach Thomas, had a problem. And you recognize some, some fundamental uh, uh, I did, Vince. Problems up front. I, I, what was going I, on? I did. You know, he, Zach is a young guy and 6'5", yeah. about 300 pounds, which is a little light for the left tackle spot. But he was putting himself behind the eight ball with his setup. What he did in a loud stadium, he came to the line of scrimmage and he put his eyes on the ball. He never looked at the defensive end. He put his eye on the ball. So now when the ball snaps, he's got to find the guy while getting enough depth. And that simply did not occur. He was finding the guy trying uh, and not getting enough depth, and the guy was running right by him. Everybody in the country saw that. But the difference was what they did was they took Note Boom, who was previously scheduled to be their left tackle. They took him from right guard, and they took big Kevin Dotson that they traded – for from Pittsburgh and put him at right guard, and they move uh, Note Boom over the left tackle. And if you watch Note Boom on those noisy pass rushing situations, he had his head facing uh, the opponent where he uses peripheral vision on the ball, and he got ample depth, and then he had plenty of girth to be able to ward off that pressure from the blind side um, pass rusher. I think that's who they're going to have to play left tackle from this point on, unless Alaric Jackson is healthy and get back in the lineup, because he actually knows what he's doing, what he can't do, and, and, and it makes a difference. You can't not block these pass rushers in the National Football League, whether they're interior pass rushers or edge pass rushers, if you're taking improper sets, if you're doing the wrong thing to put yourself in position to block these guys. And that's what was happening with the young man a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, we call that the silent count, Jackie, but you really have to neutralize that pass rush somehow. And you're, you're right about that peripheral vision. Not only does the quarterback have to have it, the offensive linemen have to have it as well. And have to use it. And when they're, when they're on their game, Jackie, you know, guys like Puka can catch the balls. You know, he's caught. 39 passes for over 500 yards in four games. It's, it's amazing. First time in history. And he caught the game winner. But did you see his first catch? Walk off game winner. Jackie, when I watched the first pass that Matt Safford threw to him, mm -hmm. he tipped the ball to himself on a little seam route. Yeah. And the defender was there. He didn't know where the ball was, but Puka knew where it was. He tipped it to himself and then kept going. He kept going. I said, this is going to be. Something to watch. You know what? You you, you, you you make me want to get a little excited about watching yeah. him and Cooper Cup at the same time. <laughs> yeah. But I'm I'm inclined to believe that he's running all of Cooper Cup's routes now. So how can you have two guys on the field running the exact same routes well, when the, both of them are, have great hands? Well, leave it it's to gonna Sean, be, McVay. Sean McVay. <laughs> leave it to Sean McVay. He'll figure it out. He'll Jackie. figure it out. He's going to have a twist out there. He'll figure sure. it out how to get it done. Hey, let's switch over to the Chargers. Uh, okay, the Chargers.